innovation, creativity, color, life. Stravinsky's Petrushka has all this and more. In this video, discover how Stravinsky reimagined the sound of old Russia in this groundbreaking ballet score. I'm Calvin Dotsie, and this is the Houston Symphony's Classical Notes. In 1910, an unknown Russian composer became an overnight celebrity in Paris. His name was Igor Stravinsky. The world premiere of The Firebird was the hit of the season for the Ballet Russe, a Paris-based Russian ballet company, and Stravinsky's score caused a sensation with Parisian audiences. After this first big success, the 28-year-old composer summered in Switzerland with his young family. By August, he had begun to compose a piece for piano and orchestra about one of the puppet characters from the Russian fairgrounds of his youth, Petrushka. Sergei Diaghilev, the impresario who had commissioned Stravinsky to write The Firebird, insisted that he expand Petrushka into another ballet. It would become their next big success in Paris the following season. The ballet is set at St. Petersburg's Shrovetide Fair, the Russian version of Carnival. It takes place in the 1830s at Admiralty Square, a park near the Winter Palace. Throughout the ballet, the fair almost acts as a character itself, and Stravinsky conjures its atmosphere with daring and imaginative music. Many of Stravinsky's musical techniques have parallels in the visual artworks of his contemporaries. Consider collage, for instance. Literally French for gluing, the term collage was coined by artists like Picasso and Brock in the years just before the premiere of Petrushka. In the score for his ballet, Stravinsky seems to find a musical equivalent for collage by using found melodic material. Indeed, few of the tunes in Petrushka are actually by Stravinsky. At least 15 musical quotations have been identified in the score, mainly drawn from Russian folk songs and popular music one might have heard on the streets of St. Petersburg. Stravinsky cuts up melodies and rearranges them in brilliant ways, much as a visual artist might cut up and rearrange found images in a collage. The opening melodic fragments are actual street vendor cries one might have heard at a Russian marketplace. Drunken revelers appear accompanied by a Russian folk song. A dancer appears accompanied by an organ grinder playing another Russian folk song. A competitor then begins dancing to a popular French tune. Just as at an actual fair, the different melodies clash as the street performers compete for the crowd's attention. This clashing music was unlike anything anyone had heard at the ballet before. But this collage technique is not the only way that Stravinsky transforms his found musical objects. It is as if Stravinsky has supersaturated the colors of the fair with his bold orchestrations and harmonies. Consider, for instance, the way he harmonizes this dance, based on a Russian folk song. Here's the melody by itself. A conventional harmonization might sound something like this. But Stravinsky harmonizes it like this. Stravinsky's version broke the established rules of harmony with a simple yet bold and brash pattern, 
much as contemporary Fauvist painters use bold, brash colors in their canvases. But there is another likely source of inspiration for these unusual harmonies, the accordion. Accordions typically have two sides. One has buttons or keys like a piano that are usually used to play melodies. The other side has a different set of buttons. Instead of playing single notes like the keys of a piano, each button produces an entire chord. Although skilled accordion players use these buttons to create conventional sounding harmonies, it would be easy for an untutored folk musician to create harmonies similar to the ones Stravinsky uses, especially if they were playing on the kind of simple accordions typically used for folk music, instruments that only have notes that correspond to the white keys on a piano. All one would have to do is play the buttons one after another in a row. The accordion is not an instrument typically found in symphony orchestras, but it is just what one might have heard at the Shrovetide Fair in Old Russia. And this is not the only way the humble accordion inspires Stravinsky. Throughout Petrushka, he frequently imitates the sound of this instrument, transforming the entire orchestra into a giant cosmic accordion. The sound of this folk instrument forms the backdrop to a colorful cast of characters. Wet nurses, represented by young women in traditional Russian dress. A dancing bear and his master. Accompanied by two women, a merchant recklessly throws banknotes at the crowd. Coachmen and grooms, the young men of the fair. The nurses and the coachmen then dance together. A group of mummers led by a man dressed up as the devil. And the dancing crowd. In the hands of Stravinsky and his collaborators, the fair becomes a vast celebration of life. This colorful pageant demonstrates the power of art to transform the ordinary into something magical heightening our perceptions of the world around us. You can hear Stravinsky's Petrushka and more orchestral masterpieces performed by the Houston Symphony, broadcast each week by Houston Public Media. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the music.